Another day of trucking. Okay. We haven't gotten any assignments yet, but they know we're here, they know we're ready. Uh, let's go uh, drag ourselves out front so that when they do give us something, we're ready to go. Shouldn't be too long. Yesterday we uh, had the day off to take care of our fertility appointments. Didn't film much throughout the day. I did film a little bit there. But we got that done. I had three appointments throughout the day. And now it's Friday. And we're back at it. So yesterday with our fertility appointments and whatnot, I didn't film much throughout the day like I was just telling you, but I did film a few clips while we were there explaining sort of where we're at on that journey. I'll just insert them here if you guys are curious, and then we'll continue on with today's video here. We're just hooked up to our load, so I'll see you in just a minute. Heartland Fertility Clinic is up there. It's another fertility day. Crossing our fingers again. This is our last attempt at IUI. Uh, the next step will be IVF. Uh, you can always go to Google if you want to better understand what those procedures are. IVF is a lot more of a, it's a lot bigger of a procedure. All right, these IUI appointments are about $625 for each one. The IVF is $15,000. Uh, it's, it's not cheap, uh, so. We are on a journey to become parents and start a family. We've been having a little difficulty along the way. The doctors can't quite figure it out, but uh, we're gonna keep trying. We're gonna keep trying until that, that day when we're holding a nice healthy baby in our arms. So appointments all day today. I did my appointment this morning. Britt's got her appointment this afternoon and then I've got another appointment uh, later on today as well. So we'll be in the city all day. No trucking today. We'll get back to the truck tomorrow. We got important things to take care of today. And there she is, the woman of the hour. <laughs> In a lot of pain today, eh? She's on uh, uh, new prescriptions uh, for this round of IUI. I told him this is our final shot at IUI. Only get one shot. One He's shot. He's real slim shady. <laughs> Said it. And then after this, we move on to IVF. And uh, that'll probably be in a year or so. Hot <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're in the city all day for appointments today, and uh, hopefully this month is the month. Yeah, I got diagnosed with something called adenomyosis, so it explains all the pain that I'm in all the time. It's similar to endometriosis, not quite as severe. Uh, can't be corrected with surgery, aside from a hysterectomy. So I just got to grin and bear it. Um, but uh, that explains a lot of the pain. A lot of the fatigue and uh, some of the infertility anyway. Yeah, we've got some answers anyways. I was going to let you explain that if you felt comfortable. So Yeah. What's it called again? Adenomyosis. Adenomyosis. Similar to endometriosis. It's just like the opposite thing of endometriosis. Yeah. I'll let Google uh, answer that for you guys if, you, uh, yeah. if you're more interested in figuring out what that is. Yeah, I won't explain it for you trucker men because you won't care and you'll be grossed out. But, you know, for those who like medical stuff, like me, I'm a medical buff, then there you go. It causes a lot of pain in you, right? A lot of pain. <laughs> so she's in a lot of pain all the time. And so there's it's... a risk of low iron and uh, anemia with this. So I just got to be careful. Other than that, it doesn't really affect your life, except for a little bit of fertility. Mm -hmm. So... Just a little bit. That's not a big thing with fertility, though, right? No, you can still get pregnant. It's just that your risk of miscarriage increases a lot. Oh, okay. So uh, even well into the second trimester, closer to the third. So I just gotta, if I hopefully ever get pregnant, I just gotta treat myself like a delicate flower. Mm -hmm. No lifting anything. Nothing. No doing anything. No stress. Stressful. No, no stress. tickling me. Okay, I can do that. I can. I can do that. No horror movies, nothing that can startle me. 
Just got to be very delicate. Be very careful uh, when you get pregnant. I'm going to live like a snowflake. <laughs> so that's where we're at. That's what happened yesterday. There was a whole day worth of appointments. Well, there's three appointments that took the whole day. And uh, after that, we sort of just went home and relaxed. Uh, Britt put her feet up. And that's the way it should stay now. She's got to relax and stay stress-free. And hopefully it takes. We'll cross our, cross our fingers. And if it doesn't, like we said, uh, we'll be moving on to the next stage. And that will be in a while. So who knows? It could happen naturally between now and then. If it doesn't take this month, uh, we'll never lose hope. But today, anyway, well, I just hooked up to a new load behind me here. And it's kind of a special one. You want to know why? I just hooked on. I haven't even put the airlines on yet. And look at this. They tie it down for us here. Now, isn't that a nice little treat? So all I got to do is walk around here and make sure that it's, you know, secured properly and to my standards, which it always is. They always do a great job here. Look how many straps they use. Absolutely every little layer and every little thing is tied down. All I got to do pretty much is hook on, roll up the gear, hook up the hoses and boogie on down the road. Imagine how long it would take if I had to strap this myself. Look at that. This would have taken an hour, depending on, you know, how things went. Maybe more. <laughs> Look at this thing here. Eh? They got like these steel thingamajiggers in here, all chained down and in. Huh. Boxes right on the back, everything. So it makes my day very easy. So let's roll up the gear and get moving we're gonna go down the trailer here make sure every single strap and chain is tight and if it's not like this this is too loose for me I'll give it an extra click maybe two feel it again okay yeah much better all the way down here all these straps and then when we're done what happens is uh, they give us this red toolbox and what uh, happens is when you deliver this you take all of their equipment chains binders straps ratchets everything you take it you put it in this red toolbox and then you bring that red toolbox back and then it makes it back here and they tie down another load for us that's the process that they not everybody does that almost actually nobody else does that I've actually never heard of anybody else doing that but I really like it that they do. I like their system that they got here. It saves me a lot of time and energy. Beautiful. Okay, let's pull this back to the yard. Uh, this load is going to North Carolina. More specifically, it's going to Fairmont, North Carolina. A highway driver waiting for it. When do they want it there? Let's see. No, that's my favorite. They don't give me a delivery date. But it's Friday today. Friday the 16th today. I'm assuming Fairmont. They're probably going to want it there next Thursday. Maybe Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday. I don't know. I don't know that part of it. All I know is that it's going that way. And I'm just taking it back to our yard. Let's make sure it's not gonna fall off on us here. And took this. We're good to go. Come with me, my friend. I will take you to who is going to take you. North Carolina. Does that make sense? I will take you to who's going to take you. Let's get ourselves up onto the highway here. attention to it while it's behind me to make sure nothing shifts and to make sure everything 
everything stays in place as it should. Just like that, it's empty. Nah, I'm just kidding. This is a total different trailer. <laughs> Brought the other one back to the yard, parked it uh, on the other side of those trailers over there. Hooked up to this empty step deck. Gonna check the air here, because it doesn't look like these bags are inflated yet. I'll give them a little bit. Okay, so they are inflating. Okay, just gotta give them a minute. Always got to make sure that you got air in the trailer. Where I picked up from, uh, that shipper always drops the air in the bags of every trailer before they drop it. And the the guy there, the stunt driver, came by and he just made sure that I was putting air in the trailer because uh, he was telling me stories about drivers who show up there and just hook on and go without checking the airbags. And he said one of their other drivers caught another driver it was an outside carrier i don't know who it was but uh caught one of them it wasn't us in saskatoon nine hours down the road and the guy was asking like why is my trailer riding so rough why is it so bumpy and he said well did you put air into the trailer bags and the guy was like a deer in the headlights huh he had no idea no one had ever told him to check the trailer bags he just thought they all automatically filled up so that's why i tell you guys often make sure there's air in the trailer that could cause some real real damage and believe me when you bring the trailer in for repairs the shop is really not going to be happy with you if you drag a trailer nine hours without any air in the suspension that's that's riding with literally no suspension for 900 kilometers almost like 600 miles almost 500 miles. I don't know what happened there. That's where his story ended. We had a good chuckle and shook our heads over it. And um, Man. I was always told over and over again when I was being trained, make sure there's air in the suspension. Make sure there's air in the suspension. And even just moving a trailer in the yard, you can tell if there's air. As soon as you move forward, just a little bit, you can tell if there's air in the trailer or not, just by the way it moves. But I guess, you know, that comes with experience too. So that is just a really tough experience to take and to learn. I don't know what happened to him, but I can guarantee you there was some really unhappy people he had to deal with after that. But that's a really extreme circumstance and that wasn't us. That wasn't any of our drivers. Believe me, our drivers, I got faith that that wouldn't happen to them. But. I mean, accidents happen. You don't want to say everything's going to go perfect all the time. Accidents happen. Unfortunate circumstances arise, but dude, nine hours? <laughs> That's past the limit of like, oops, it was an accident. That was, I'm glad that wasn't us. Oh, John, let's pull this empty step deck around and uh, I don't even know what they want me to pick up. They just told me, go find a step deck, pick your favorite one. Favorite one was the first one I found. How about that? It's got tires, air in the bags. Can I make this corner here? Oh boy. We'll do a U turn somewhere else. There's Milo that I just brought in right between those two van trailers there. I wish I would have filmed backing into that spot because it was smooth. Got it in there. 
first shot without pulling forward, without even stopping, it's just one fluid motion. Yard Bill saw me. He backed me up on that. That was uh, one of my better moments. <laughs> Getting loaded. They didn't tell me it was going to be a wide load, but good thing I always carry my equipment that I need for it. <laughs> Looks to be probably, what, 10 feet wide? That's my guess. I'll have to measure that out yet, yeah, check the paperwork. They're just going down the road pretty much into Winnipeg. Probably about a 15 minute drive. <laughs> so we're going to tag it and flag it. Tie it down, button it up, just to go around the corner pretty much. Here we go. Literally just down this road. I'm just gonna putz my way over there and it's gonna still take me only 15 minutes. I think this is probably the shortest trip I've ever had. Cars just flying through a construction zone while we're unloading on the other side of my truck there. Do you see that? <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do, you can you can block off the road. They'll just drive around the pylon or drive around the barricade or whatever they have to do to get past you because you know they're uh they're late for something. They're always in a hurry to get somewhere. <laughs> nicely eliminating all of this evil, evil white stuff. Any other time of the year, like in winter time, it's not evil. It's just, then it's just snow. But after my birthday, after April 1st, I don't want to see any of that anymore. So that's it for the week. They got nothing more for us to do today. I'm just gonna clean everything up, park the truck, wipe it all down, get it ready for Monday so I can come into a clean truck and uh, get all my stuff in the pickup and head home. I think I'm gonna pull out the pressure washer tonight since the sun is out again. My pickup is taking a beating this week. She's dirty again, that's unacceptable. Unacceptable. Cannot have a dirty pickup. Oh, oh. Pin puller. 